Hello, my name is Carissa Corey, and today I'll be going through an example applying Bayes' theorem when working with probability distributions. Specifically, we'll do an example using the beta binomial model, and we're going to estimate the population proportion of people in the United States who have at least one tattoo. So before getting started, I want you to think about what you know about the population proportion of U.S. adults with a tattoo. So here on this graph, zero would represent 0% of the U.S. population and one would represent 100% of the U.S. population. What proportion or percentage do you think is most probable? And with that, what values do you think are more probable than others? So for example, maybe you think that the most probable value is about 20% and it's definitely greater than zero and it's less than about 50%. So perhaps you would draw a distribution that looks something like this. Again, you could draw or imagine anything here. So now we'll consider some possible priors. So perhaps you set sort of a middle of the road prior, or in other words, the most probable population proportion of US adults with a tattoo about 0.5 or 50%, and values that are really small and really large are very improbable. Alternatively, perhaps you thought that the population proportion of people with a tattoo was relatively low, maybe you thought it was relatively high, or you had no idea. And so you could just put a flat line representing that all values are equally plausible here. And we represent these distributions with a beta function. And beta distributions are uh, used when we're working with variables that take on values that must be greater than zero and less than one. So in this case, population proportion, it has to be greater than 0% and it has to also be less than 100%. So with a beta PDF, PDF stands for probability density function. Uh, we're representing theta, which is our population proportion of U.S. adults with a tattoo, the beta distribution with the hyperparameters alpha, comma, beta. Alpha is the number of successes, or in other words, the number of people with a tattoo. Again, this is our prior belief, so we have not actually viewed any data yet. It's what we would expect to see. And beta here is the number of failures, or in other words, uh, the number of people without a tattoo. So for example, if we consider the not probable model with the beta 2-4 distribution, this might mean that we would expect to observe two successes. In other words, two people who have a tattoo and four failures. In other words, four people without a tattoo if we were to ask six people. However, it's also helpful to think about the beta distribution in terms of the properties of the distribution itself. So we can directly compute the mean, the mode, the standard deviation, the variance, et cetera. And we can set our prior distribution based on these values. And so, although it can be helpful to think about what the number of successes and failures that are expected or anticipated based on prior knowledge or experience, it's also really helpful to think about what mean or what average value is perhaps most probable in the population and what the variance looks like. So there actually is information on this. Pew Research Center shared that about 32% of Americans have a tattoo and the 95% confidence interval ranges from about 30.5% to 33.5%. So before getting into the data, let's pause and talk about the binomial distribution. We may choose to use a binomial function when the data generating process produces dichotomous values or outcomes. So for example, if you think about flipping a coin, it could either land on heads or tails. If you consider a selection process, you can either hire someone or not hire them. So in this case, if we ask people whether or not they have a tattoo, they either have a tattoo or they do not have a tattoo. So the binomial distribution is appropriate here. The binomial distribution takes um, n, which is the total number of people that we'd ask, 
theta, which is the probability of success, or in other words, the probability that somebody has a tattoo, and X would be the number of um, people with a tattoo. So here is our binomial PDF. And so it gives us the probability of obtaining X number of successes if there are N total people that are asked and a probability of theta of somebody having a tattoo. Suppose we ask 20 random people whether or not they have a tattoo and seven answer yes. We can go ahead and plot our likelihood here. So based on this information, we can see that seven is very likely as well as values close to seven. But as we get to lower and higher values, these are increasingly less likely. And we can actually compute the probability directly. So we looked at this binomial PDF before, and now we have information that we can plug in. So we can just simply plug in seven for X, which would be the number of successes or the number of people with a tattoo, and plug in 35 for theta, which would be the population proportion, or in this case, the percentage of people with a tattoo, and we would get about 18%. So if we return to this graph, we can see here that seven in this box, is a likelihood of about 18%. Similarly, uh, perhaps we observe two people with a tattoo and if theta is still 35% or 0.35, then our probability would be 1%. So here, this is equal to about 1%. So in these cases, we are assuming that theta is a single value. In this case, theta is 35%. But as we talked about before, when we were looking at various prior distributions on theta, it's possible that theta could take on many different values or that there are many possible parameter values for theta. And that's what we've represented in our priors. So now to get our posterior distribution, we are not just looking at our prior or our likelihood, but we are actually multiplying these uh, distributions together to get our new updated belief about the population proportion of US adults with a tattoo. So these are if these are the possible values of theta or the possible population proportions of US adults with a tattoo, we observed that seven out of 20 people have a tattoo this would be our resulting posterior distribution. And we can do that with our other models. So notice that the likelihood in this case, it is normalized. And what we mean by that is that the likelihood function is integrated over all possible values of theta. In other words, we're getting a scaled likelihood. And the posterior distribution is this green distribution. When we use a flat prior, our posterior is the same as our likelihood. So we have looked at these separately and now we're going to examine them together to get our posterior. So when working with the binomial likelihood, we can apply something called a conjugate prior. And this means that if we choose a certain prior distribution, in this case, a beta distribution, the posterior will be the same family as the prior distribution. So in this case, a beta distribution is a conjugate prior to the binomial likelihood, and so we get a posterior that is also a beta distribution. And specifically, we know uh, we can solve for this distribution quite easily. I won't show the proof here, but ultimately our posterior hyperparameters are equal to alpha plus x, where x is the number of people we observed with a tattoo comma, beta plus n, our total number of people that we asked, minus x. Consider this example again. This is our not probable model. We can go ahead and take these values and plug them in. So we asked 20 people total whether or not they had a tattoo. Theta here is our probability of success. And we are estimating theta as a beta distribution with the hyperparameters 2, comma, 4, and then we can go ahead and plug in these values to get our posterior distribution. And in this case, we get a beta distribution with hyperparameters 9, 17. And that is what we see here in this green distribution.
Thank you so much for watching.